now we have effects. In effects here, you have the name the effect. You have an icon that represents the effect. So when you cast, when you cast like blood strength, it applies an effect to the character, and that's an icon. And you'll you'll see the blood strength icon appear in the lower, the lower row. It's a, it's in the lower um, right hand corner of the screen. And this is the script of the effect. And you have, and this row, this row here, this this allows you to either put it up on the first row or the second row. There's only zero and one. There's only two rows in the game. <clears throat> then you have type, subtype, and compose. Um, type, you can go up and find the designations for type right up here. Like type three means it's a mod, it modifies a stat. So blood strength in the case when you activate blood strength effect you'll get a stat increase and this is a, this is an additive that's what this compose number represents you can check that up here with uh, do, 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 do. Um, yeah compose it's first last man max add and that's common amongst most uh, most effects so that means you you have various levels for an effect as well as flat Gosh, I hate that when it happens. Okay, so these are the these are the various bonuses based on the level of the effect that's added, and this is determined by the the by the script really. To apply an effect, you typically use a script <coughs> in a discipline. That's it. That's how this is commonly activated, and this will carry over um, the discipline level. So based on the dot level of that discipline will depend on the dot level of the effect and the bonuses it gives so like at dot level one it gives only plus five strength um, we also have some disciplines that have a tick rate like uh, for quell the beast so every half second it'll drop so this is a particular effect every half second as a tick rate it'll drop if you cast it at dot one it'll drop your frenzy by four points every half second and you, you I, I know that because if you check type type is set to two and two represents base stat over time so that uses the tick rate so when we go back over to quell beast here it has a tick rate and it's affecting a stat it's stat type 8 so stat type 8 that's located here stat type 8 is frenzy <coughs> let me let me also cover flags because apparently I skipped over that <coughs> when we uh, the flags are represented here and there there are hex values as well just like I showed earlier with the calculator and uh, X value 200 says that it's cancelable, which means that <clears throat> if an effect is added, uh, the player can choose to cancel the effect by right-clicking its icon. So any effect that can be cancelled should have an icon of some kind. So let's check here. See, like uh, blood strength, you can cancel this effect if you right-click on the blood strength icon that appears on the lower uh, right-hand corner of the screen when you cast blood healing. So that's pretty much what the effects.NED does. Now we got NPD here. This is particle definitions and this this file is ginormous. If you're ever going to create a new uh, particle for the game, <coughs> this is where you do it. There are various uh, particle types. There's gas emitters, and you got plenty of examples of gas emitters and if you're if you're adding a new new uh, particle it, it's pretty much ha you have to do it empirically um, uh, we don't really have a program of which will make this process easy for the game uh, so essentially if you're making a new if you're making a new flaming effect you just copy an existing one and uh, you could change this material you could change this name and then you can fiddle with these values 
including its color and end color, its min and max speed. <clears throat> you can play with these various values and and change the uh, the way the flame looks. And each each type of emitter has a different set of values. Like this, uh, this has velocity and gravity for the uh, flame type emitters. And there's also you can also add different weather effects. Typically, uh, rain emitters. These are typically used for the effects of snow and rain and drizzle. And you can create additional effects and use. Uh, new types of materials. So this is this is where you would go to add new particles. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to cover of that. I, I will cover an example of uh, building a new uh, particle later on. Now we have the game.ntt file. This this is a this is a pretty big file as well. <coughs> what this uh, what this NTT file does is um, it allows you to change how random tre how the random treasure system works. This is where random treasure is defined. So when you click on a container to open, you know, to open a treasure chest or some such, um, a treasure chest will have a designated class value. And when you do when you open that treasure chest, it'll go down the system here. It'll this this represents the percentage of chance that um, a different type of loot will be dropped. So there's a there's a 50% chance. So like on a small container with a class of 17, there's a 50% chance it'll drop one of Ardan loot definitions. So when you go up here to Ardan loot, um, you find it in the the enormous list of whoa stuff here. Um, here we go. We got Ardan loot. So there's a chance that it'll drop silver coins, gold coins, um, things of value, really. If it drops uh, coins, um, it has this other designation which uh, determines what the value of those coins should be. Like you have cash, cash two, cash three. Um, so if it drops, if it drops coins. It'll drop. Um, it'll drop a certain value. So what you have here is on this here, this alternate. Um, you it, it, it essentially says that cash two ranges between 11 gold coins to 50 gold coins, and cash three ranges from 51 gold coins to 100. So that's it. That's pretty much how cash is determined randomly from a uh, from a treasure chest. So um, and when we go back to that, if there's a 50% chance it'll drop cash too, there's a 10% chance it'll drop gems or a higher level of cash. If it's it's going to go down this line, what it's going to do is going to calculate. Go okay, did this succeed? Nope. Then move on to the next one. Did this succeed? Nope. Did move on to the next one. Then there's a chance that it'll it'll hit another um, item. Perhaps it'll go into if there's a 50 percent chance it'll hit this Arden items and drop something else. Like uh, like when we go to Arden items, it'll drop Vitae or Disease Vitae or Greek Fire. It'll essentially randomize between one of these with a high chance of spawning Vitae and some and if you if you count you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a there's a one out of nine chance that it'll drop a disease vitae or or yeah, a disease vitae or a uh vac vaccine or a, what is it say uh some sort of uh anti poison uh concoction. There's also a chance you'll get a bloodstone or a Greek fire. All right, that's how you understand um, how the treasure class system works. Um, as for these other numbers out here, I don't typically mess with them. Um, apparently, they they go much further in depth. There's a lot of unused elements 
within this NTT system. I think they were trying to design this to be modular, like uh, like Diablo. I, I'm thinking if if you really go into this file, you can probably change change the system enough to create a Diablo type of treasure system where there's a lot of heavy amount of randomization. Like uh, you can actually create potentially create a new item out of this treasure class system uh, uh, apparently at least that's what it looks like uh, there's a lot of unused elements of the NTT file and you could probably play with those and discover what is actually working out of this file so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the gist of these main files I'll cover more in the next tutorial um, yeah over